Welcome to another video. Let's find x, given that the floor of 3x plus the floor of x is equal to 6. You must have this at the back of your mind that there is no chance that x is an integer. x is not an integer because if it was an integer, it would be either 1 or 2 or 3. And 3 times an integer plus x another integer will be 6. It doesn't look promising. So we know that x is not an integer. It's just so you can prepare your mind that our answer is not going to be an integer. Okay, now what does this mean? Let's go back again to the definition of a floor function. It's basically that there is an integer that is the floor of x. And that integer, if we call it k, has this property. That k is either less than or equal to x. That's the meaning of floor. It's always under or they are at the same level. So we say that if k, if the floor of x is equal to k, then we know that k is less than or equal to x and x is less than the number that is next after k. We call it k plus 1. This is very important in solving these floor and ceiling functions that we solve. So you know that if x is any number, k is the floor of x means that k is less than or equal to x and that x is less than the number, the next integer. So if x is 1.2, then k must be 1. And we know that 1.2 is less than 2, which is the next integer after k. That's what you need. We need this. And then we need to do the same thing for this. Let's do the same thing. Let's say if t if the floor of 3x is equal to t, then t is less than or equal to 3x, and 3x is less than t plus 1. I promise you, these are the two things we need, and we'll be done with this. Let's get into the video. Because our focus is supposed to be on x, I'm going to try to change this t. I don't want to have t in my calculation. I just want to have k. So we're going to think of it. What exactly is the best way to put these together? Well, remember that t is the floor of 3x. So we can replace this with t, replace this with k, and this is 6. So we actually have an equation. We know that t plus k equals 6, which means that t equals 6 minus k. So what I'm going to do is, instead of writing t here and t here, I'm going to write 6 minus k, so we can have some nice equations to work with. So let's do that. So we're going to say that for the first equation, let's draw a line here. For the first equation, we have not equation, inequality, we have k is less than or equal to x, less than k plus 1. This one does not have the equal to option. It cannot be equal. Okay, it has to be less than the ceiling. Now, in this case, we have t. Instead of writing t, I'm going to be writing 6 minus k. So I have 6 minus k is less than or equal to 3x, and it's less than, instead of writing um, t here, I'm going to write 6 minus k plus 1, which is going to be 7 minus k. These are the two inequalities that I need. Now let's start thinking precisely. Okay, think very well. Because we're going to use these two only to solve the entire problem. Let's start with this. Oh, wait. Can we make this and this look alike? Yes. Why don't we create an x here? 
We can easily do that by dividing each of these sections by 3. Let's do that. So if we divide each of these sections by 3, we get, if we divide this by 3, you have 6 minus k divided by 3 is less than or equal to x, and it is less than 7 minus k divided by 3. So look at this and this. They both have x in the middle. So now let's do some comparison. We know that k is less than or equal to x. Right? Nice. Now, from here, let's just jump to this side. We know that x is less than 7 minus k over 3. This is certain. We got that from all the definitions we've used. So, definitely, because k cannot be more than x, and we're sure that x is less than this, we know that k is less than this. So, we can go here and say k is clearly less than, no option of equal to 7 minus k over 3. 7 minus k over 3. And then we can solve this inequality. We get 3k is less than 7 minus k. Let's pull 1k over here. We have 4k is less than 7. What do we have? We have k is less than 7 over 4. So k is less than 1.75, right? So we can call it 1.75. Okay. Well, remember k is an integer, right? And it's a positive integer because, look, we're adding the floor of a number plus something gives you a positive number means that the things you're adding are positive. There's no subtraction anywhere. So we know that if k is a positive integer and it is less than 1.75, it has to be 1. That's the integer, the only integer that is less than 1.75. Hey, this is not x. We're still talking about k. But let's assume we're not sure what it's going to be. Let's just wait. We're going to go back to it. So let's go again. We're going to go to this side. We know that 6 minus k over 3 is less than or equal to x. But here we know that x is less than k plus 1. We can do the same thing we just did here. Let's do the same thing. Okay? We know that k is less than 1.75. We also, let's do the same thing. 6 minus k over 3 is less than k plus 1. So if we multiply both sides by 3, we're going to end up with 6 minus k is less than 3k plus 3. Negative 4k. Oh, negative 4k, and this is going to become, I got scared, negative 3. So what we have is if you divide both sides by Divide both sides by negative 4. This sign is going to change to a greater than. And then you have k will be equal to 3 over 4. I mean greater than 3 over 4. So k is greater than 3 over 4. And k is less than 7 over 4. Oh, it's beginning to look juicy. Let's look here. What do we have? So we have 3 over 4 is less than k. But k is less than 7 over 4. So it's like this. 3 over 4 is less than k, and k is less than 7 over 4. See what we have. This is 0 0.75, is less than this integer, and this integer is less than 7 over, over 4. See, I could have told you that because it's all positive. Our k is supposed to be 1, but now we can prove it. The only integer between a proper fraction and 1.75 is 1. Okay, this implies that k is equal to 1. So we have found k. Now, what does this mean? It means that the number we have here is 1 point something. We haven't found x. Remember, we need to find x. So what we found now is the floor of this is 1. The floor of this, we don't know. But if this is 1, and if you add this to this, you're going to get 6, it means the floor of this is 5. Right, you get it? 
So let's go back to all the conditions that we have. We know that 1 is less than or equal to x and x is less than 2. So that's, that's going to be 1 plus 1. So let's go again. So we know that k is less than or equal to x and x is less than k plus 1 which means 1 is less than or equal to x and x is less than 2. This we know. Our answer is between 1 and 2. But this is too wide a gap. We need to figure out exactly what would make this work. So let's go back to here. We know what our t is. Okay, remember t plus k equals 6. So since t plus k is equal to 6, we know that t will be equal to 6 minus k, which is 6 minus 1, which is equal to 5. So the floor of this is 5. So therefore, we can say, and let's do it again, t is less than or equal to 3x, less than or equal to t plus 1. So we know that 5 is less than or equal to 3x, and this is less than 6, 5 plus 1. So what exactly is the value of x? Divide everything by 3, you will notice that, let's do it here. You will notice that 5 divided by 3, 5 over 3 is less than or equal to x, and x is less than 2. The smallest value of x is going to be 5 thirds, and the largest value of x is going to be any number that is less than 2. We'll satisfy it, but the smallest you can go for x is going to be 5 thirds, and that's the key. So you can say that this is x is on this interval from 5 thirds to 2. You can actually include 5 thirds, can't you? You can. Let's do this. So, never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye bye.